Now, Defense Secretary Robert Gates spelled out his plan to change the way the Pentagon does business. He spoke moments ago in an exclusive interview with our Peter Cook in Fort Worth, Texas, at a plan that's making the Joint Strike a Fighter. Peter joins us now from Fort Worth. Peter, what's going on? Matt, thanks very much. We are here at the Lockheed Martin plant that makes the Joint Strike Fighter the biggest Pentagon program in history, biggest one in terms of cost and size. And we spoke with the secretary a few moments ago. He was here taking a tour of this plant, and we are joined now by the CEO and chairman of Lockheed Martin, Bob Stevens, to talk more about the secretary's visit. First of all, thank you for the time. I appreciate it's great it. Great to very be much. with you. Thank you. Uh, how did the tour go from your perspective? He seemed in our interview to give a pretty solid vote of confidence to your aircraft back there. Well, I thought the tour went very well. First, it's a great honor for all of us to have. Secretary of Defense here and to host him on a visit. And I think among his observations, he commented on the quality and caliber of the workforce here. And certainly we take great pride in that workforce, and that workforce takes great pride in the work that they do, and the Secretary clearly uh, observed that. This is a very complicated piece of machinery. Every major fighter uh, in the history of this country has gone through development problems uh, through the course, some overruns as well. Tell me where this plane stands from your perspective. Well, I think we're tracking to the program plans that we have in place. The purpose of the secretary's visit was to make very, very clear to us his expectations and our need to perform to our plans, not just producing a superior technological product, but to also make sure that we maintain our schedule, that we enable the government to start training pilots in 2011, and that we fully equip the Marine Corps for an initial operational capability in 2012. And while we're doing that, to support our allied government interests in the program while maintaining affordability. So there's a full array of things that we have to do. But we also have confidence in the team that we put together here, the experience that we've had through many decades of building high-speed combat tactical airplanes have all been put to place on this program. In addition, we've reached out to partners across the industry and has formed a superior industry team that I believe will be able to meet the Secretary's expectations and to deliver on schedule and on cost. He suggested to us that he's satisfied that some of the biggest execution issues may be behind you. First of all, is that accurate and what are the execution issues, the toughest ones you still need to overcome? Yeah, I think when you first think of combat jets like the Joint Strike Fighter, you, you have challenges in physics. Well, we've discharged all those challenges, and we know this technology will work. You then get into a progressive array of dealing with engineering challenges, and we're getting to the end of those engineering challenges. Now it's a management challenge. We've got to get a global supply chain to work. We've got to get through the flight test program and assure that the quality of the airplane is everything that everybody expects. Then we've got to drive down the learning curve, get costs out of the airplane while maintaining maintaining quality and, and put these airplanes into service, and that's what we're ready to do. Uh, I'm chuckling because we are hearing the roar of a jet engine behind me. I'm assuming that's that the that, sound of freedom you hear over your shoulder. Is that an F-35 test underway, and, and where does the testing stand? Yeah, we are, in fact, testing the uh, Joint Strike Fighter today, so that could quite possibly be one of our test articles uh, in addition to an F-16 chase plane. We have several models of the airplane in progressively more challenging aspects of the test program. We're still relatively early on, but the early signs are that the jets are performing extremely well. And you heard the secretary mention that the jets, when they return from these test sorties, are returning code one, which is a vocabulary that we use saying the jets returned in a pristine condition, that it's perfect and ready to go for the next mission, which is quite unlike early developmental jets that tend to have more problems that have to be ironed out after each sortie. This jet is really showing that it's not only assembled very well, but the quality of the components and the quality of the system are performing against the expectations that we have. Let me get your sense about what the Secretary said about defense spending going forward. I asked him if he expects budget cuts from the Defense Department in the future. This is a growing defense budget, even this next fiscal year. He says no. He still expects it to grow somewhat. You've taken some hits in this budget with the F-22, the presidential helicopter. What's your own outlook for defense spending? Well, I think we align ourselves completely with the, the assumptions that the Secretary made when he said he believes in consistency in the defense budget. Boom and bust defense budgets don't really seem to deliver good capabilities at an economic value for taxpayers, because he talked about having to catch up at some future time. I think he appropriately starts with examining the global security context, which is not getting more simple, and recognizing America is going to play a leadership role here, and it's appropriate for us to consistently invest in our security and the security potential of friends and allies. The 
question that he posed and the challenge that he's given us is give me affordable, reliable systems for the amount of money that we're going to spend. So we're very big fans of consistency in defense spending, and we recognize our responsibility of delivering consistently with the commitments we make on our programs. One final question for you. The defense budget he submitted, a reform defense budget, he said, does it signal a new day for defense contractors? Did you get a message, you and other defense contractors out there, that it's not business as usual at the Pentagon anymore? Yes, I think so. I think uh, the secretary uh, is, is uh, very dedicated to reforming the acquisition process. I think he's very serious about assuring that taxpayers receive good value for the investment in our security. Uh, the expectations are made very clear to us. I think uh, he's recognized the F-35 is a top priority program and wants us to put our best foot forward on that program, and we're very able and willing to do that. Mr. Stevens, thanks for letting us visit here, for visit the, visiting the factory floor. Appreciate it very much. Great to be with you. Thank you. All right, we'll send it back to you all in New York. All right, Peter, thanks very much.